All right, so then uh, moving along in Campbell's Masks of God, Oriental Mythology. Um, this is a, a, a section called Mythic Inflation. Uh, the previous section was called Mythic Identification, where the Pharaoh literally identified himself with the God. Pharaoh was God and had to be killed and slain, and his entire court had to go down with him. And as we look at the cemetery at Abydos, uh, here's where we started with King Aha and his three tombs, uh, probably his wives here, and then all of his servants and retainers here. And then it just kept getting larger and larger and larger. All these little squares are little graves uh, that correspond to retainers. King Jet, King Jer, King Den, uh, King Ka, uh, Semerket, um, all have uh, chambers. But now, um, in the Second Dynasty, a new innovation came in. I think people got tired of wanting to do that. And um, so now we have these things over here that are called royal enclosures, where they're like uh, sort of wide open courts, almost like you would play a ball game in the court. But what it actually is, is uh, an enclosure for the said festival. Um, the said festival is what replaces the actual killing of the king and his court. And what the king has to do is perform a rite where he runs around the court getting various benedictions. Um, this is every 28 years, according to some scholars, getting benedictions from the various priests uh, to rule, to uh, um, consecrate him uh, as, as the king yet again. And he's always the dual king. There's always two kings. It's always Horus and Set, um, always two kings. Um, and, they also found over here boat graves, and there are 14 boats, and the Ka, the, the, the actual pharaoh had 14 Ka's, so he apparently needed 14 boats to transport those 14 Ka's along with him uh, into the other world. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, these are in place of real human beings. These are called Shabti figurines. So now they make Shabti figurines uh, that they put in to help the Pharaoh, which he will magically reanimate in the afterlife. Uh, and I'm sure his court was very happy about not having to be strangled or poisoned to death. Uh, so these serve as beings that are reanimated in the afterlife. Here's what the boats looked like at Abydos when they dug them up. Um, sort of half in the sand and half out that would have transported the pharaoh's 14 Ka's with him. Uh, we don't know that much about the second dynasty. It's probably the period in Egypt that we know the least about. But we do know that they stopped doing ritual regicide and killing off the court and bringing in art to substitute for it. Art becomes the great substitution. Um, Campbell calls this mythic inflation, and I'm not sure he's correct here. Um, he says that the the king now um, is absorbed into the ego. Let, let's see. The difference that he says here is worth looking at. He says... And so we are now to recognize in the history of our subject a secondary stage of mythic seizure, not mythic identification, ego absorbed and lost in God, but its opposite, mythic inflation, the God absorbed and lost in ego. Um, I'm not sure there's that much difference between them because they're both playing the role of the God. Um, maybe literally in the first dynasty, and uh, not so literally in the second, but I think it's a matter of inflection. Um, and uh, this is the tomb of, uh, this is from the tomb of Kasekamui. And you can see once again that the Pharaoh 
Campbell calls this the secret of the two partners because the pharaoh is always double. This is the Horus Falcon uh, wearing the the crown of the Delta, uh, the uh, lower Egypt, and the strange dog-like creature that's always associated with Set. And by the way, there's a mythological opposition between the bird and the dog that goes all across the world. Um, there's an opposition uh, between them. And I just want to show this, how complex these tombs are getting now. This, this is underground, and I believe this is a staircase that leads underground, and it's incredibly labyrinthine. They get more and more labyrinthine and complex with these so-called magazines um, full of grave gear. They used to be full of dead retainers, but now they're full of grave gear and goods and things that the pharaoh will need uh, on the other side when he has to reanimate his court. Um, and there's also little models of boats and little models of people tilling the fields that he can reanimate and reactivate. Um, so there's that. And um, this is the tomb of Kasekamui. Um, also, um, this would have been filled uh, with dead retainers before, but now I think they're filled, they are magazines that are filled with uh, grave goods. So um, they're moving out of the darkness of the bull, the darkness of the moon, the darkness of the night sky, um, and they're moving into a much more civilized way of life as we would expect from the Egyptians, one of the greatest civilizations of all time. And so we'll leave it there with uh, dynasty number two. Um,